So, uh, start off with, with a bit of a personal story about GeekCon. So, it's a conference, three days, and you build useless stuff, right? The, that's the most basic thing about GeekCon. And some three years ago, which means my kid was, my son was four years old, he came in for the closing session. And in the closing session, we had laser show. I actually created the laser show by taking and dismantling a speaker and putting, instead of the membrane, I put a glove, and on top of the glove, I put a mirror, and that mirror would fluctuate as the sound came out, and that turned into a laser show. And to date, every time I mention the word geekon, my son, Ofek, basically admires me. Right? That's the one thing that he remembers three years since he was four-year-old, which generally you don't remember anything from when you were three, uh, three, four-year-old. Right? So if I take a step back, my job, I'm a venture capitalist. In a way, it's the best job in the world. I get to give people money in order to pursue their dreams. Right? And still, the most creative people from all of these, I wait for one thing every year. And that one thing is this Geeks Conference I'll talk about today. And I'll talk about three different things. I'll talk about the first one is, what is it? Right, that's the first thing. The second thing is, why do we still do it after 10 years? And the third thing is my hope that people sitting here will create one yourself, and how can you do it, right? So how do we run GeekCon and how do we make it work? So the, the first way to learn about GeekCon is through something, it's a project that never existed. The person doing it never intended to do it. The guy doing it is now an MIT Media Lab grad. He came in to do something completely different and then he saw a bunch of equipment and what you don't hear, and we've tried to debug it, is he was playing popcorn. Right, on something that just didn't exist three days before. And this is not the kind of project that Geekon does, but it just happened by itself. So if I look at this, this is a post from Facebook just from yesterday. People are trying to think what kind of project will they do. So this is a guy called Oded, and he's thinking, uh, do I do a 3D sandcastle printer? So he's saying, yeah, I don't want to, do, to build castles with my kids every day, so let's do a 3D printer that does that. Remember, three days. That's the whole conference. This is what he wants to do. Option number two is to have no fire fireworks. Right? So he would do 3D printing and fire off. And he's asking for people to vote. And obviously, the third option, that's kind of boring, right? Domino's robot. But it's the kind of work that people do before they go into GeekCon. These, we are three months before the conference. And these are some of the suggestions, the top suggestions that people are offering right now for GeekCon. So the first one is a two meter diameter ball that has a camera on it that is stabilized and it goes out and badges people. So it's just useless, right? But that's exactly the kind of projects that we're looking for in building for those three days. Other projects, physical digger, so having robots run around, try to replicate what digger was. Anyone actually played digger? Anyone is old enough to play digger? Nice. So why not do it with robots? Right? That's, that's the kind of spirit that we have in people doing that. So a few projects. The first one, how, how, do, you do, how do you flower plants? Right? How do you water plants? Right, you go ahead and just water them. But that's not what GeekCon people do. What they do is build a quadcopter as a platform, have water to it, image recognition, so it finds the plants below it. And when it finds, it actually sends water their way. Right? This is the kind of projects that people are doing. Uh, this is a urinal. It's a repeat pattern in GeekCon where people actually control, in this case, a computer game. You can imagine how, right? And again, useless projects, and I'll talk a lot about that. So, third thing is this is a meta builder of race cars. And what I mean by meta builder, it builds race cars by building something that builds race cars, remote controlled with vegetables, right? So it actually builds these kind of race cars by itself, you give it a potato, it will build a potato-based race car driver. You'll give it a tomato, it will build this way. And the bonus points, it will actually drive power uh, with a vegetable. All right, so these, that's actually from two years ago. So smart, crazy stupid, right? Who, who does that? That's Tesla. Uh, that would be the ideal Geekon participant, right? And at the end of the day, it's one 
person, finding that one person that is crazy enough in order to build something that will make a difference. In this case, fun, right? But will make a difference. These are the change makers that we're looking for. So process-wise, how this whole thing comes to bear is we have thinking, what if we find 200 people like that? 200 people that are smart, crazy, in order to build something. So step number one, find those people. We're based out of Israel. It's become, Geekon is now a worldwide conference. So it used to be just a bunch of Israelis playing around for three days. Now people from India, Singapore, uh, Germany, Great Britain, US, they're all coming in order to build that. So now it became a very big international event. What it was not just a few years back. Take technology lovers and put them in a single place in order to create useless stuff. And why is that important? Why is useless important? Because people are much more creative when they do that. Right? When you tell them you will not be judged according to what you do, but you will be charged as how cool that is, how does it defy kind of technology barrier, and go ahead and build something. So this is what Geekon has become. Right? You take like-minded people, step back, like-minded people, and you tell them they, they will not be judged. Right? What, what do you think this is? Right? It's people fighting on top of robot platforms that direct them to the people next to them. So it's like go-karts. Do you remember the, the game? But this is the geek version of go-karts. Right? You take and you basically tell people, yeah, you can build it and you'll be appreciated with only one rule. Right? So never mind what your pedigree is. Doesn't matter if you were CTO of somewhere. Doesn't matter whether you have done an exit. The only thing we care about is that you have to have a project, right? So the whole thing starts now, about, for 2014, where we send out a request for proposals. So in the proposals, we basically say the only thing that we'll check is, do we believe that you can actually do it, right? And is the project crazy? And applications-wise, there are about 400 people, 400 groups, different groups that send in applications, and we can only accept about 40 of them. So you can imagine the level of extreme that people go to uh, when they talk about projects, right? The rolling ball, one example, but the more interesting one is just two years ago, someone was playing orchestra with puppets by controlling it with a Microsoft Kinect. Right? So these are the kind of projects, and it's really beautiful, right? It's absolutely useless, but it's beautiful because you're actually controlling a bunch of puppets. I love it. So no project, no entry rule. Actually, there, there's a second rule. This is the useless projects. And really a third rule, because the third most expensive part of Geekon is insurance. Right? So the first is we provide accommodation. It's three days. That's accommodation. The second thing is coffee throughout the 72 hours. And the third is insurance. And can you guess why? Right? The kind of projects. But so three years ago, we fired off a missile by mistake. And you know, how do you fire off a missile by mistake is if you strap it, to a surfboard, and that surfboard tilts, then you'll get a missile launch. And that about doubled our insurance rates for the year after that. So accepting differences right, of the different people and promote to the extreme. So in this case, can you imagine what this, uh, can you imagine what this is? Trampoline, right? But what can you do with the trampoline? that is interesting. If you jump, your silhouette becomes your login password. So if you want to log into your computer again, you, dump, you need to jump exactly that same way. Now, the interesting part with that is that it's actually fairly deep tech. Right? In order to do this, you need to have image recognition uh, that takes and hashes the value of what is the jump and what kind of posture this person had. And then it actually evaluates next time whether these are the same. So it's a login. It's well before the login announcements by Google today. I think this is the next gen, right? Um, so the guys behind it went ahead and did gesture matching. It's one of the bigger companies in Israel, one of the top leaders in gesture matching. And it became from a useless project. It all started with that. We don't have enough women participants. We're at about 15%. We're constantly increasing. But this project was led by uh, Ifat, if I remember her name. And the basic project was, how about we do a breathalyzer? Right? Breathalyzer, the reason to do it is in order not to have too much alcohol. But this is Geekon. So it checked whether you have enough alcohol in your blood. And if not, it poured you a drink. Right? 
So, and highly successful was one of the more visited projects throughout the period. Uh, you want cat pictures, right? But it's not fun if the cat isn't scared. So these guys actually built image recognition, finds a cat walks in, makes sure it scares them, and if so, it takes an immediate picture. Not very, not very animal friendly. By the way, keep a, if you have questions or comments or a question, don't make it an American session. You can just fire off as 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 you go. This project uh, again, three days, and it was a roller coaster for cell phones. Right. So what what you'd do before you'd record you shouting, and then it used the accelerometer in order to understand whether the phone should be scared. And if it should be scared, it used your own voice in order to scream. So the cell phone was the suffering part, but you were actually doing uh, the ride. And they built the roller coaster itself, the whole thing, in the, in the same location at that same three days period. Uh, Superman simulator, right? So this is a terrain engine, a military grade terrain, terrain engine uh, 3D simulator uh, that you controlled by being suspended in midair. And you had a controller on your hand, so you could actually fly through. And this, the feeling was really like a Superman. Mostly useless. Can you imagine what this is? So we don't have insurance for C. So this was actually objectionable as, as far as our insurance goes. But what it is, it, it, they just built it in order to prove that you don't need to have a technology at all in order to build a useless project. Right, you can this is a wheel, right? So uh, the, way, the way it's structured within Geekon, it's a large space because we want people to be really close to one another. And the things that happen because of that is, for example, you're, you, you need a capacitor, right? The people, you, you're a maker, you're a hardware, but you didn't, have, you didn't bring something from home. So one event that actually happened, 2 a.m., someone says, who has a 20 kilo home uh, capacitor? Someone immediately raised and they got, so that's why we want the small space. And that generates a lot of interactions between the different people. But on the porch, you actually see the Mediterranean here. And this is where the more the riskier projects happen on this side, like robots that run around. Right? So that's, that's where we have them now. And the whole thing starts by people joining in Thursday. So it used to be Thursday night. It now is Thursday noon. And they pitch their projects. So you say, hey, I want to build this drawer, and the drawer will open and close if you push your hand towards it. So you pitch. And many teams actually dismantle that point and say, hey, your project is so much cooler than mine. So I'll just move ahead and do that. So that's, that's Thursday. That's what's going on. And by Saturday, we're actually doing demos. What happens in between is things like that. This is a user-generated dinner. And uh, What happens in a user-generated dinner by geeks? A flamethrower, 10-meter flamethrower, is used in order to create creme brulee. Right? So it's user generated. They do whatever. A quadcopter goes up above the barbecue in order to supply the air supply, because you do want to have a great barbecue. So every year, um, last year was uh, biological cooking. So anything that geeks do then translates into food. And it ends with trying to convince our families that they gave up on us for three days for a good reason. Right, so people from either the sponsors or luminaries or people from the industry, and definitely the family is trying to understand um, what it is that we do. And that ends Saturday, 3 p.m. So right, we start Thursday, 3, 2 p.m. to Saturday, 3 p.m. And all projects must be completed within this time period. Right? Some people cheat by doing some preparation in advance, but everything is done in three days. They're building by designers, makers, hardware engineers, software engineers. Everything is built on site in order to create that. And the whole thing has been running now. It's the 10th year, and it's an entirely volunteer-based event. So no one is paid in order to do this weird thing. Right? So this is the initial team. Uh, that started it, and this year we actually have 30 volunteers. So this year is Geekon X, right? We want to make it the biggest, baddest, uh, greatest pro uh, projects of all the time, and so we have a very big team. And how you do? Oh, by numbers. Yeah. I didn't remember having this slide. So 180 people. This year is actually going to be 200, and the way we managed to do that is people actually volunteered to come in in tents and and sleep in tents in order to be able to increase the amount of people. 
Uh, 52, it's now going to be 72 hours, 40 useless projects. We really like beer. So there's always a local brewery that supplies us. But the interest, and we have pretty much all the time coffee. But the interesting thing is, what's our goal in doing this? And the goal that we have is 66% failure rate. So last year we failed because we had a 50% success rate. Right? And why do, you, why do you go for the 66%? The whole idea of GeekCon, much like other venues like that, is building the infrastructure, building the framework that makes people so much more creative. Right? And the way to make them more creative is by telling them, we want you to fail. Right? So there has been projects like firing down mosquitoes with lasers. And that half worked because they mostly hit people. But that, so is that success? Is that failure? We don't know. But it's pretty cool. Uh, so we really want to fail. And some, some people think that we are less crazy than we think that we are. So Google has been helping us in many ways. But General Motors, who would expect General Motors to sponsor a bunch of geeks that try to do useless stuff? Um, Face.com, a company I founded, was actually born there. Uh, so that's one uh, great impact. So we got to know each other. People get to know between teams. But that's a you know, side effect. Interesting other side effects is uh, conferences that get built because of that. And in my mind, that's my goal for this session, right? So GeekCon, uh, again, insurance, we can bring people that are um, younger than 18. So we are pressured by some of the participants in order to create GeekCon for kids. Um, one day events, and those kids build the most crazy stuff, much more, they're much less burdened with limitations than the parents. So the kid thinks of the idea, and you suddenly see everyone building uh, into it, right? Which is awesome. Uh, Tentech, DrinkCon. DrinkCon is going to happen for the first time this year. Uh, it's GeekCon for alcohol side. Think of sauna based on alcohol. Um, going to be interesting. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Tentech is uh, taking clean tech and doing that in the same spirit of GeekCon. So in the desert, two days, build things, uh, in, but build in that space, right? It's not things that you bring in advance. Uh, well, OK. Amdocs, uh, a company that was doing this, the Israel Defense Forces has actually copied off uh, the GeekCon model, and they have an event internal for the Intelligence Corps and for Air Force that they're doing in order to build more creative things. And uh, so, so we have done that with Microsoft. So how can you do this? The, it's pretty easy. It's a lot of work, but it's pretty easy, right? So GeekCon, in order to, to have it up and running, there is a spreadsheet. What a surprise. Everything is a spreadsheet, right? So first off, when we started planning for GeekCon X, this is this year, we said, OK, what, what, what do we want to do? Right, the first thing is we want, what are the principles that we have? We want a bigger organizer team, have it longer, do two pre-cons, meaning conferences that happened before in order to help people team up and build bigger projects, in order for them to understand 3D printing, uh, in order for them to do Oculus Rift. There's actually a project, a submarine-controlled Oculus, Ri Oculus Rift control submarine this year. And in many ways, that's because of those pre-con structures. So these are the principles. This is what we wanted to do, bring in more women, get internet to work finally, 10th year. We've never b uh, been able to do good internet infrastructure. So these are the principles. Uh, the, then we went off and said, OK, so these are the teams that we need. There are 30 teams uh, that are charged with teardown, setup, projects, website, pretty much anything that needs to happen in order to get things going. And you then find owners for each of those. These are the volunteers uh, that now there are 30 of them instead of the four that we are usually. And then the how-to. There's the, the file is actually called how to. And these are all the to-dos. And surprisingly, the amount of to-dos um, is very, very deep before the event. And then the event itself runs itself right? in many ways. So 150 things that need to happen. All the must items, if they don't happen, there will be no GeekCon. All the high items, if they don't happen, it will be an OK GeekCon. Medium, if you do the medium, it will be an awesome GeekCon. And low, you never do. Right? In startups, generally, there is must, must stir, and must test uh, priority level. And the same with GeekCon. Um, and this is what's going on in the event itself. Right? So very short. If you look before, it's about 70 items. But during the event, it's basically, OK, let's get the teams going, give them rooms, make sure they have a refrigerator for the user-generated dinner, and the rest will uh, happen by itself. So the organizer team, most of the stuff that we do is ahead, just making sure the best projects 
will be selected, that there will be the infrastructure, there will be a group buy in case people need to buy many Arduinos. But otherwise, it's running uh, pretty much by itself. If you want to do a uh, GeekCon yourself, the best way to do that is to experience GeekCon uh, by coming. Right, so 18th to the 20th of September, this is what's going on in Israel. We already have a lot of pressure in doing it in the US. Uh, Philadelphia volunteered to do it. But basically, anyone that is interested in doing it, it's a spreadsheet away and talking with us. Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Uh, who's, who's volunteering to do it? Uh, that's in California? Y Combinator. <laughs> awesome. So we have California going. Questions about the how is it going projects? What's what? Are you so how, how does it start, you're asking? So generally, what happens, a uh, great example is the Space IL guys that will launch to the moon in uh, late 2015. Pretty much the same. Most of the projects that we see, people sitting in a bar, uh, either ex-participants or they've heard of it, uh, they start scribbling things down. They write the application. We usually try to help them improve on the application. Uh, but that's the soul. Uh, all the soul of the projects is by the project owners. Our job as organizers is to have an organized chaos, right? to give them the stage, give them the infrastructure, help them meet the right people, like-minded people, and make sure nobody feels that they are judged. The number one impact is make sure that everyone thinks that the crazier the better and the more fun, that's awesome. And people are generally always thinking, oh, does it have a business model? Or what will be the next step? And once, once they get rid of that, they build awesome projects. Oh, how it started? Um, we were at some other conference, and we said we are not willing to wait a year before we see each other again. Uh, and that conference was similar to Food Camp, which was very much about talking. And I said, fuck it, we, we want to do things. Uh, so, and, and so we did. So first, first GeekCon was um, with a budget of 8,000 shekels, which is about $2,000. And it was done overnight and 80 people. And it really worked great. So we decided, hey, let's do it next year as well. So that's pretty simple. No. Um, so great question. Are, is it always the same people coming? So the overhead in creating a project is so, mu is so big. Uh, and you know that no project, no entry, is, is we, we take it very seriously. So you know that if you come just to hang out, uh, you will most likely not be invited the year after. Uh, so that's a, that's a pretty good um, leverage there. So generally what happens is people, we have about a third um, repeat from last year. It's now about 1,000 people strong uh, that went through uh, the event in multiple years. So about a third are the same. Two thirds are coming out, and we a lot of the work that we do, and look at the responsibilities. So, uh, new recruits, that's one of the top uh, responsibilities, and one of the largest teams, if you see, um, because we want to bring in new blood all the time, and it's important for us uh, that people have the fun in making, uh, and that's why we actually make sure that we have. Designer, we go to most design schools, we go to most engineering schools, and we just pitch. And most of us have a day job, uh, and it's still something that we constantly do. Cool. Thank you.